Well, listen, there's so much to get into this week, Finn. Let's kick it off with the big news about uh, Jim Ross's comments last week on uh, his podcast, Grill and JR. I've got them here on my phone. Um, he had some comments to make about some of the AEW guys, and here's what he had to say. Um, all you guys go outside, you cluster up like quail, you stand there in a huddle, friends and foes together, side by side, so you can catch some leaping idiot going over the top who never wins with this move. They are looking for the holy shit champ. They love to hear, this is awesome. It's a spot, folks. It's a trapeze act. I don't buy into that. And he goes on to call it bullshit. Um, and then Brandon Cutler <laughs> Brandon Cutler put out a, a tweet about the seven-on-seven seven match that he's going to be having on tonight's Dynamite, where he basically said, you know, we'll all be there, friends and foes together, waiting for somebody to jump on us. Um, and it's caught a, kind of lot of, a lot of response on both sides. How do you feel about JR, who is a commentator for AEW, sort of saying how he feels, on his own podcast and, you know, saying what a lot of people do feel about some of the AEW spots. Well, clearly JR's at the end of his tether. That's all I can say. I mean, on one hand, I do agree with him. He is absolutely right. Uh, I echo his sentiments. I actually uh, amplify and magnify those sentiments. He couldn't be more right. But at the same time, he is AEW's mouthpiece he's one of the commentators and it's his job to promote the brand and to promote AEW and their matches so i think he's kind of speaking out of turn i mean if i was him i don't think i would i would have said that because it's his job as AEW's you know chief cheerleader that's what the commentators are is to compliment this company but Clearly, he's got to the point where he's just had enough. He can't stand it anymore. He just thinks so many other things that take place on AEW programming are simply not believable within the parameters of pro wrestling. And they are not. I agree. I couldn't agree more with him. Um, so for him, he's obviously, I think he's been conflicted and he's probably been thinking to himself, do I say something? Do I say nothing? Do I keep storm? You know, do I tow the party line? Or do I say what I'm really thinking? And he's obviously thought to himself, this is my podcast. This is me being independent. I'm not in my AEW cheerleader role when I'm on this podcast. I can say what I want. And that there has won out. Um, you know, he's had that argument with himself. And that, that side of him, the independent voice of JR, um, has won the debate, won the argument. And he's decided to express his feelings, his real feelings, I'm sure, very publicly. And it did provoke quite a debate from people online, on the Inside the Ropes community as well. People were talking about it there. So while on one hand I agree with him, on the other hand, I do feel like, well, you know, should you have really said this publicly, Jim? Maybe just have a word backstage. You know what, Kenny, maybe he's already had a word backstage and it's fallen on deaf ears. And he's thought the only way for me to really communicate to these people is to do so in a public forum, i.e. on my podcast. What do you think about it, Kenny? Yeah, well, it's funny because JR was actually saying a lot of this stuff on uh, the, the Grill and JR tour that we did with him back in February. This was all stuff that he thought before. So it feels to me like he has probably said to some guys backstage and it's just not gone anywhere. Um, yeah. And he's just kind of, like you said, at the end of his tether. But somebody who came out and sort of agreed with Jim Ross, and I, I didn't really see this coming, but it was quite a pleasant surprise, is Darby Allen came out today in an interview with Sports yeah. Kida saying that he agrees with Jim Ross. And I feel like that, I feel like what a lot of us, because I, I kind of, I'm quite disenfranchised with it as well, is, it's, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind mad spots and big stuff happening on shows, that's fine. It's more when you see a bunch of people huddling together to catch someone, it's very obvious. It just takes you out of the moment and it happens on in so many matches and like you know yeah. I, I mean you can't really say like you know don't do that move because you never win with it because wrestlers always use moves that they don't win with but i think the point that he's trying to make is that like the damage that could be caused by doing these dives is just the risk is not worth the reward because i can't think of a single person i've ever seen pin someone as there is as of a result of an outside dive so I'm kind of curious because with Darby Allen sort of backing up JR, uh, Dax Harwood from FTR backing up uh, JR, I'm curious as to how JR is going to be on commentary tonight on Dynamite during that 14-man tag that involves Mr. Brandon Cutler. 
Yeah. I mean, I think with Darby Allen, I mean, he obviously does some daredevil moves. I mean, that's his gimmick. I mean, his big daredevil move is the coffin drop, which actually is a finisher. And that does usually, or occasionally at least, lead to the finish, lead to him winning matches. So I can understand why Darby Allen would take JR's side. It's also with him being the champion and him probably figuring that, you know, he needs to really side with JR because maybe JR in the end will win out on this one. Um, and also it just feels like that's the more mature thing for a wrestler to do. And as a champion, he's trying to set the example. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to hear what JR has to say in this seven on seven match on tonight's episode of Dynamite. Uh, but I'm with you, Kenny. I mean, they do all these gymnastic moves and spots and choreographed, overly choreographed tumbling moves which are not really designed to win matches. They're just intended to provoke cheap pops. You know, it's not, they're not earning the heat. They're not building a story. You know, it's just soulless. It's just, you know, let's throw this out there because it's, it's something that will attract a cheer. We haven't really worked for it. It's not going to really figure uh, in the story of the match because if the match is just all tumbling moves, there isn't really a story. So, I mean, you know, I'm absolutely with JR. I mean, I want to see fewer of these type of moves in AEW matches, especially, and in, in other types of matches as well. And it's like we always say, less is more. If you do like one big dive in a match, it's going to be memorable. It's going to, it's going to leave an impression. If all you're doing is dives and fighting to the outside and just tumbling about, then none of it leaves an impression on anyone it's just this blur of high spots so i mean i think but there again you know a lot of these wrestlers particularly in AEW, that's all they can do so if you were to ask them to do actual wrestling moves and transitions and work holds and actually build a solid believable precise tight match a lot of them it's just beyond their capabilities and that's really why they do the the tumbling moves I mean, if, if you're Tony Khan, what do you do? How do you manage this by having, you know, two camps, the camp who are more traditional and the camp who like to do this more daredevil style of moves? Does, do you think he needs to step in or does he still need to kind of see it play out? I mean, obviously, he's the he's the, the head of creative. He's the booker. He's the one in charge. He's the money. So he can make that decision. I mean, you know, this will, this is going to be a test for him. Whose side does he take? Does he issue an edict whereby we need to minimise this type of uh, content? Uh, I mean, really, on last week's Dynamite, when um, FTR had the match with the Varsity Blondes, uh, there was very few sort of high spots in that. And that was such a refreshing thing to see after the opening Young, ba Young Bucks versus Jack Evans and Angelico match. So, I mean, you know, it was nice to see something different. You know, this does happen, obviously, in AEW. Uh, but the FTR match to me was far more memorable than the, the Young Bucks match. And that's because they did less flying, tumbling, choreographed high spot moves and more, you know, wrestling where it actually appeared like they were trying to beat the other team. Um, you know, I thought, it was a, I thought it was a pretty good match. I enjoyed the FTR match on last week's uh, Dynamite. But yes, yeah, I, mean, I mean, it's up to Tony Khan. I don't know which way this is going to play out. As I just said, Kenny, I mean, some of these acts, that's all they can do. And if suddenly, uh, and also a lot of the AW fans want those wrestlers to do those type of matches because they're spectacular and they're easy on the eye and that's what they expect from those wrestlers. So, you know, for the wrestlers to do uh, a different type of wrestling would almost then result in them having to do almost a re-education process for the audience. Um, and that might take time, but in the end, fans would accept that and fans would actually pop more for the dives if there was less of them in each match so i mean i'm hoping he uh you know tones things down a bit and just gets people doing less so that it leaves more of an impression but we'll see what happens